I see you. Your eyes. Your hands. Your chips. Everything. So I don't need to see your cards. We play at FullTailPoker.com. Adam Schoenfeld. Welcome to The Scoop, brought to you by Full Tool Poker. We have a young man named Brian Mykon. I call him the icon. Who has I coined the that. icon. And uh, he's an up-and-coming poker player and poker personality as well. He's also a uh, rock on tour media developer. Very and, interesting guy. And a guy who has good, good perspective on a lot of things. So uh, not yet as well known, but we've got him here. and We'll be able to look back in a few years and say, we had him before he was... Uh, before he blew up. Huge. Yeah, exactly. This jacket you wore when you were at the final table with Frank Henderson and... Um, Johnny Chan. Was Bones Berlin. <laughs> yes. Back in the 1970s. What I like about you is that you're a up-and-coming poker star, but you have an appreciation for the history of the game as well. Yes. This Describe is, this artifact and some of your other artifacts. This was, this was definitely <laughs> an intentional purchase from eBay. Uh, I've been looking for an old school Binion's jacket for a long time. I've asked many security guards and old time poker players when this was to try to like carbon date it that way. Right. See, there used to be a tournament called the Hall of Fame tournament, which was like the second biggest tournament. That was a very years. important tournament. It was a big so deal. It was a big deal. And uh, just like at the World Series, if you made the final table, you got a jacket. Now, if you make the final table, you get beef jerky. Yeah. You get a, I mean, literally, people might think we're kidding. This year at the World Series. And thousands of dollars in sponsorship opportunity. Yes, but in terms of the host providing a, sure. little, a little memento, now they you don't get, give you a jacket. Uh, they don't I'm, give you. I'm actually really pissed about just like when Harris took it over, they got rid of some of the really cool parts of the World Series satin, crazy, like gaudy <laughs> jackets. They have, I went, I played as a carpet with a carpet protector of a Stu Unger chip this year. That's they had those memorial know. chips, you remember yeah. the whole series, the Barbara Enright, the Stu awesome. Unger. Barbara Enright, and it's old school, and she's got a perm, it's the best. See, like, I'm, not, I'm not a Harris basher, which is why I may be terminated from Carpet. <laughs> but uh, it would actually be in their interest to promote some more of the historical sure. ties, and, and they, at times they do, but a lot of times they don't, and it's like the whole history of it is what attracts a lot of people and, and gets people excited yeah. about, hey, there's a whole legacy from Johnny Moss to Stu Unger to the modern times, and a little bit of that's been lost. Eric Drake, Bob Thompson. Yeah, of course. The Furrier, Perry Green. Not to get caught up in stuff that nobody knows about. Uh, this is the except, history of except poker. Except us. <laughs> <laughs> you, um, you made a run in the horse event ah, this yes. year. Uh, what happened? Are you, are you... You're now a mixed game specialist? <laughs> yes, I am the champion of all mixed games. But you do, no, you are putting I, an emphasis on mixed games. I now. did, and now I've seen both of you gentlemen, actually probably Diego more is more hardcore about some of the horse tournaments on some of the online sites. I play, not on some of them, I play the Sunday. How dare you? I play Till, this, poker, no, no, I, uh, no. There, there are other good sites too, believe me. But on Full Tilt Poker, there's a horse tournament every Sunday. We see each other at six thirty p.m. And I've requested that we be seated at the same table <laughs> as much as possible because of some of your study <laughs> in particular. But uh, <laughs> it's a great tournament with a very good structure for people who are like trying to, sure. because it's a two hundred dollar buy-in, so it gets a little better caliber player, and. Um, I play it religiously every Sunday because I never have anything else going on. This I week, you a see you in it there. every t every week yeah. there. That and the twenty four dollar one on and full tilt just for. A we used to play that every night. night. We used to play that every night, and now I, I want to get back into that because it's a very enjoyable tournament. And if you want to play a horse, that's a great, super inexpensive way sure. to, to train in the horse. Uh, give us a little bit of your. Uh, y they call you the king of all degenerates. <laughs> What's your background? How did you become that? 
I, let's see, how did I become the king of all degenerates? Well, back in 06, they were just throwing out TV time for poker. And I made a deep run in the main event. I brought some props. Got a, had a donkey wand. Yeah, describe uh, the props, please. All right, one of them was the thriller dance, which is when I do this after winning a hand. Now That's I, all the more timely now. It's, it's retired. No, no, it's very it's timely. It's RIP. Right, it is. <laughs> it came back, but yeah, now it's dead. It's the now, was that kind of a... Dead. A self-mocking thing, or honestly, I called one of my best know friends. Any better. <laughs> my best friend, Jason Miller, kid I known since I was one, roomed with him in college. I called him up. I said, "They've been pointing TV camera at me because I got a lot of chips in this thing. What do I do?" And he just snap answered Thriller Dance. So, I'm like, all right, fair you, enough. You had a media strategist, in effect. <laughs> yes, we'll call it that. We'll call so it this media was, strategist. This was uh, <laughs> thought out. It was not a spontaneous. Uh, no, he just said, actually, the first time I, I used the donkey wand as like a, th of like a month's thought out prop of like... What is the donkey wand? It is a, uh, an LED that, uh, that when you shake it really fast, um, you call it developmentally disabled. <laughs> like when you shake it really fast like that, then it says donkey. It's like written in, in air. They have this. Yeah. But uh, it, just, and it didn't show up on camera, but they showed me doing it a couple of times, and it looks like I'm just... And when would you like do it for example? Nuts. Like I would, I would did it. I did it only for a big hand, and uh, or just like <laughs> oh, the tension's high. It wasn't. It wasn't uh, yes. an inappropriate. Just acting. I out. only did it when someone was knocked out of the. <laughs> <laughs> when I just put a terrible beat on right, somebody. Right. It would be when I'm all in. That's amateur hour. I'm sorry. I run. We don't turn it we, off. We have a. Uh, we. I don't know if you know, but Never Win Poker, a site that uh, that I run. We are a a zero style of reporting, the zero style of reporting, the zero effort reporting <laughs> operation. Right. We do nothing professional. You guys have a beautiful office here. And, uh, you know, we just kind of shoot from the hip. Yeah. Just shoot from the hip. That's what we do. You know, so all this lie. stuff, see, I've played with you and I know you, I know you're a nice fellow, but all this stuff is the kind of stuff that I think is, at the same, at, at the same time that it's promoting poker, it's also destroying poker because it's so... I, Antithetical to the respect that players used to have. Some for each people other. hate you. And I would say, I would say that if anyone that's played with me at a table, I mean, you've played with me too. Yeah. Um, not in like a super camera. But I haven't everywhere. had the wand sure. pointed at me or a dance. Right. You would have beaten <laughs> <laughs> Brian senseless be people for less. <laughs> yeah. I would table. say that the situations that I used some various antics on were definitely like playing for the camera. And I, if you played with me in these tables, I don't think you'd say like I was totally out of line or disrespectful or the Havad Khan as as we'll say and by the way he, he's obviously I don't know if you guys had him had him on here the dude's like a really nice guy no I think he's a nice guy also key but I think life. he's also he he's regrets also, his antics yeah he's he also does, he does stated a number of times that he's grown he didn't know and you know, I do not regret my antics I think that they actually fit in and that when the camera was there and when you know for what they're trying to do with putting it on TV like think about the November 9 you're totally destroying the integrity of a poker tournament to promote it to make it Disagreed, bigger but right do, do you know what I'm saying you're, you are severely altering you're changing the usual I would say structure you're the to make money to promote to make this exciting to make this better for yeah. Players, but, watchers, but not, not you know. at the cost of anyone's dignity. Sure. Well, <laughs> <laughs> there's a fine line. I mean, I don't think Mr. Durant Shulman might say differently. Well, but. again, I, see, I haven't witnessed them. That's why I'm not necessarily uh, um, criticizing them. But on the surface, they could be interpreted. Sure. You know, I'm, it's just not my personality to, to do a dance. If you do a dance right after you've given someone a beat, that's unequivocally wrong. Most of the dances were done. Right before the money went in, like uh, I, I had right. committed you all my chips. Aces, they show a seven offsuit. You, that's when you do that. <laughs> no, it's that. more. It's more when the cards are unknown. Do you know what I'm saying? So like right. it. So technically, like I could be in a I way it was gamesmanship, is, and that sure. is acceptable. I don't. I think that like I know the Venetian. They cut out a lot of talking rules. You can't once. Let's say I make a huge bet. I can't be like. Or you can't tell me. Do you got it? Do you have the ace? Right. I think that's very much, and it, and that's like the old World Series, the history stuff. Mm -hmm. I remember watching that, thinking, I bet you I could out think somebody. Walter here. Pearson would you. show a card. Yeah. The the famous Jack Treetop Strauss <laughs> do seven bluff yeah. that we somehow made it into every single old poker publication. Right. Now, uh, interestingly, For, I'm not gonna. Your partner Todd Dan Druff Wattelis, bracelet winner, much like yourself, Diego. 
thick. He also had some antics that didn't go over that well. Was that the same year? Okay, that was in 05, and if you guys remember, he's I don't mean to make you defensive. I think no, this is all just I, valid conversation. I think it's brilliant. I yeah. love talking so about it. So go ahead. You do this all day long. Um, he spun a seat cover. Right. Now, Druff is very much... He did not have a strategist, you know, to talk to or anything. <laughs> he didn't have a stylist. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't go to my best people. So he uh, just like, you know, the TV camera showed up. And again, he wants, and for me too, by the way, the whole, I, I actually forgot the main point, And it's for him. It was to get this logo on television. Like, I'm a kid. I got the website. Right, no yeah, and that's legit. I am. Sure. I need to get this website on TV so people start to sign up for the forum. See, I remember um, Todd would tell us his appearance. And I didn't know him. I don't know who he was, I didn't know him, there was no connection. And of course he was foolishly like <laughs> waving this thing around and acting goofy. And and if anything, he just looked like a goofy, silly guy. Sure. Uh, which can be a good or bad image. And he was able to promote the site and get on. So on the one hand I feel like I couldn't do that. I've just you know, right. I'd be embarrassed. But he's not hurting anyone. If anything, other guys are just kinda laughing at him like why is this guy acting goofy? If anything, he's in a way. Himself. I think it, it worked because, first of all, Todd is. If you know him, he's a very good player, especially at the limit holdy. He's super serious, so he showed this side that may have encouraged people to think that he's a lunatic, yeah. which he's certainly not. He's he, anything but. He yeah, it was right. very uncar undruffish the, to do what he did, but it was. But again, it. You know, if you unfortunately wasn't wearing number one poker, but he he did get. His uh, his self on television. He got time. You know, you become like it's kind of weird what happens now. If once you're on television, like, I mean, like it 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 kind of like may, then oh, oh you're a poker player. Oh you've they filmed you playing poker. So now right. you are a poker player. This is all of a sudden well, it's a self fulfilling your thing. Also, it, it, it of course in reality it has nothing to do with your skill. But once right. you're on TV, you get on TV more. You're on TV more, your brand increases. You get more opportunities. Yeah. So it's important to be on they TV. Cover you. well, You've never one, been on TV. No, the, the one thing about being on TV is that <laughs> even though it doesn't really make any sense, it does legitimize you as a poker player. Right. I mean, I've played and won. Now that I'm just like a loser and don't play, I get on TV once and people are like, well, you this is really respectable. Now uh, you're right. they don't a know poker about your player. Your bracelet. It doesn't matter. <laughs> right. But... Uh, you know, so be it. But but television now is, I always say, for people who are playing poker and their parents are still kind of wondering, are they just pure yeah. degenerates or is this really a profession or not? And Or people that they went to college with who are like, what does that guy do? Is he just a, a broke? They see you on TV, it's like, oh, now he's legit. <laughs> now he's Even a though known broke. That can be a completely, a known random, broke. a completely random occurrence. And, of course, we know lots of guys that are not on TV or are rarely on TV who are the legitimate... Right. big winners but that's okay so is, is your ambition because i often struggle with this myself do you want to be a pro poker player do you want to be a media personality do you want to be an announcer you have your own hit radio show what, what, what do you what is brian michael uh, <laughs> yeah i do i run a very strict policy of no schedule no real aim uh, <laughs> no, no drive ambition. no ambition <laughs> right. no motivation uh, yeah and so and just kind of kind of see what comes out and I'll say the radio show is certain things that I'll do that I'll just really like and just keep doing like the radio show uh, we've had Adam on I believe have we ever had we're going to need to get no. the radio we show get, we're gonna need to get I'm going to give it even though it's here. a competing media site I'll give the radio show a plug it's neverwinpoker.com and it's Wednesday nights at 7.30pm and, and the radio podcast. show is fantastic yeah thank you Adam I, <laughs> he's been um, we got a little bit off topic but uh, the title of King of the Generates. Oh yeah, that's yes. a very competitive title because we, <laughs> well, we know a lot of people, uh, some of them big names who are on TV a lot, who have horrendously bad leaks, whether it's in the pit or in sports or in their personal lives, and and uh, and it's not even to make light of. I mean, there are people who they have tremendous poker talent, but Las Vegas, as someone told me years ago, is going to expose all your leaks, and if you have a inclination towards degeneracy, it's going to that's, flower it and full that's bloom. well said so to be king of the degenerates uh implies some incredible level of degeneracy i mean what i mean without getting into the volume what are the the uh aspects of degeneracy it's not that? really a totally earned title i would say <laughs> i mean i not as bad as i i can find a close personal friend that is worse in every single area right. 
of degeneracy than me. Right. But I just feel like if there was like a biath a triathlon or a decathlon for degeneracy, like if there was like a like a I don't know, like a a right. bar games test, I for would win. I You're consistent, you know, in yes. every category. Like I know how to play, I know how to set a Pai Gao Domino's hand, but I don't play it for like $700 a hand every night. But you will play it. We were discussing Pan the other day, and Brian was interested in the conditions, and you know, I told him that he's played with a pencil. That's, uh, you know, when I think of you as the king of, degen of all degenerates, I think it more of, not that you're such a tremendous degenerate yourself, but you're like the Pied Piper of the degenerates, because that's they rally around you and you're psyched. God, you're right. That could be the really See, dangerous. That's how you got it right. right. Soundbite it. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> much better. I wish I would have said that. That could be. I mean, that could be the most dangerous of all, because <laughs> as long as they don't know your address, it's okay. Well, no, no, I don't mean dangerous for you personally. I just mean dangerous for society in the sense that you're inspiring degenerates. And and I mean, obviously, there's a parallel to Howard Stern, the king of all media. He has a lot of followers who do crazy things in his spirit, even though he's a relatively conservative. You're going to get me on an FBI watch list, so aren't you? If you're like a cotton mather with your puritanism all of a sudden, it's not, there's nothing dangerous for society. It's all good. Now we're going to hear about some guy who, like, sets fire to a poker room or something, and they'll be like, in the spirit of Mike Kahn, <laughs> or something. You know, well, I was listening yeah. to Mike Kahn's radio show backwards, and he instructed me to... You know, uh, right? Yeah. Now, you know the eerie parallels between Mike Kahn and Todd? And you and I. Like, well, this could according be to you, this is good. That's a duo. I could no, run this down. This could be an SAT analogy because, you know, <laughs> Diego and Adam is to blank and, and, and uh, my con. And the answer would be Todd would tell us. Right. All right. Todd's a bracelet winner. You're a bracelet winner. Yes. My con has had uh, up and down results. I have had up and down results. Not a bracelet winner. Not a bracelet winner. Media superstar. Media superstar. Right. Taciturn, slightly longer winded. <laughs> Not slightly. Uh, see, what I'm, see where I'm going with this, Brian? Yeah, we should double date. Just... <laughs> all right. Brian, it's been a pleasure. And uh, in all seriousness, you are an up and coming player because you've been getting stronger and stronger results and diversifying your games. And uh, I know you do get more than a few dozen listeners that have a following and uh, enjoy the show too so I know we're gonna hear a lot more about you and uh, you provide a, a welcome and needed injection of humor into uh, the oftentimes <laughs> overly serious world yes of thanks for joining us on the scoop brought to you by full tilt poker right was at the scoop at cardplayer.com I'm about to tell you a story has a beginning, a middle, and an end. Fact or fiction, doesn't matter. It's all how I tell it. We play at FullTiltPoker.com.